Hi everyone, my name is Lariana Andrade Vicente. I'm part of the MD class of 2021. And I made this quick sketch about Ehrlichia chaffiensis and Anaplasma phagocytophyllum during my step one study period a few years ago. And I'm publishing it now in order to perhaps help some students studying for step one as we speak. This is a bug or a set of bugs that was not covered in Sketchy Micro and I thought it'd be pertinent to sort of fill that void in the world with this one. Without further ado, the sketch is about Ehrlichia chaffiensis. Um, so I have this chafing thigh here to represent uh, chaffiensis and er, stop moving lick, lick referring to the dog, um, for er, for er, er and lick, for lichia, so Ehrlichia, as well as anaplasma phagocytophyllum. Um, it had the same symptoms as Ehrlichia chaffiensis, so I'm including it in the same um, sketch. And in fact, there's only going to be one difference that you're going to be able to readily appreciate, and that's going to be the way in which you diagnose this um, either ehrlichiosis or anaplasmosis. Anyway, um, Anna was here for anaplasma, and I have Cartman representing phagocytophyllum. And I use Cartman to represent any of the prefixes of phago because I always think about him when he was eating that bucket of chicken skins and, and phagocytosis means to eat in Greek. <laughs> I don't know, it's just such a funny association that I have. I don't even really watch that show, but I always think about that. Uh, so that is my recurring uh, mnemonic for um, the prefix phago. Anyway, uh, these bugs are member of the Rickettsia family. So I have Rick's Roadhouse to remind you of that. And uh, it uses the lone star tick as a vector, but also the exodes tick um, as a vector, and in fact, Lyme disease is a common co-infection, and so if someone were to see these uh, characteristic findings on the right gamp sustain for this for this set of bugs, they'd often send either an ELISA or a serology for Lyme as well. Uh, the white-tailed deer host is, um, rather, the white-tailed deer is the host, and that's represented here as a white-tailed deer. Um, it's most common in the southern U.S., such as California, Texas, and the southeast, and Texas is the lone star state, so what I've done is given you a lone star, that's the Rickettsia star, Rick's Roadhouse, but also put in the state of Texas on as a sort of kind of badge of honor on both the dog and the man here. It does stain gram-negative, but that's not used for the diagnosis. The diagnosis is actually made via seeing um, the characteristic findings on a peripheral blood smear with a right gamsa stain. So we have sir right and sir gamsa to remind us of that stain. And what you'd find on that stain would be a mulberry intracellular, or rather an, intracell an intracellular inclusion with a mulberry appearance in the cytoplasm. And that is represented here by these mulberries growing on this mulberry tree, as well as the mulberries within these uh, neutrophils and monocytes um, within the dog here. And it can infect several tissues like the marrow, the lymph, the liver, and spleen. And so you'll see some of those symptoms shortly. If it's, again, I mentioned earlier that the way in, the big difference between these two for, for our purposes is going to be the way in which you diagnose it. You both of them get the right gam sustain, but where the mulberry intracellular um, inclusions are going to be um, depends on whether it's Ehrlichia chaffiensis or Anaplasma phagocytophyllum. If it's Ehrlichiosis, it's going to be within the monocytes. So the mulberries here are shown within the monocytes. If I can zoom in a little bit, uh, you can see the monocyte there with that mononuclear nucleus um, and the mulberries inside. And if it's going to be Anaplasma, it will be in one of the granulocytes, either the neutrophils, the eosinophils, or the basophils, and there are the mulberries there. And that's what it would look like, and I'll show you an image of the histology in the next slide. The symptoms of ehrlichiosis or anaplasmosis. It's fever, headache, nausea, vomiting, myalgia, maculopapular rash, which is less common, and splenomegaly, which is less common. And so I have represented that in this figure as follows. The fever is represented by the sweat droplets coming off the man. Um, the headache is represented by the little orange squiggly line on top of the head of the dog and the man. Nausea and vomiting is represented at the dog here with this um, 
brownish uh, fluid coming from the mouth of the dog. Myalgia, which is something that should uh, tick you off to tick-borne illness, um, is represented by a stone here that has um, the appearance of what skeletal muscle will look like on an H&E stain. It can cause a maculopapular rash, which is characteristic of rickettsial diseases. And in fact, because it is a vasculitis that is occurring at the skin there, it is going to be blanching and it is going to be palpable. It also can cause splenomegaly. The rash is represented here by the red dots and the big spleen here for splenomegaly. I know not a strong mnemonic, but it is what it is. There is an increase in morbidity or the disease severity for asplenic patients, such as sickle cell patients, and so that is represented here with a sickle. It can be complicated by renal failure. So we have this kidney potato silencer on the gun of this hunter here. Hunter, to remind you, and this scenery to remind you of the fact that it is a tick-borne illness, so outdoorsy people with myalgias are what you kind of want to think about for potential infection with anaplasmosis or ehrlichiosis. The labs would show thrombocytopenia, lymphopenia, and elevated LFTs. So the thrombocytopenia is represented by the broken plates, so broken platelets or low platelets. The lymphopenia is represented by the dog having these infected um, neutrophils and monocytes within him, and elevated LFTs with the elevated LFT flag here. The treatment is doxycycline, which is the same treatment for Lyme disease, and that's usually curative. And the main differential diagnosis you want to think about here is Rocky Mountain spotted fever, because that also can cause this maculopapular palpable blanching rash. Um, that, but however, um, Rocky Mountain spotted fever will, can also cause a bilateral periorbital edema, and this doesn't. So that can help you differentiate between the two, at least on tests. Here's the mulberry. You can see this is the mulberry appearance of the uh, cytoplasmic inclusions um, in a patient infected with which one is this? Is this Ehrlichia or is this Anaplasma? This is most definitely Ehrlichia because that's a monocyte. Very good. So just, just to quickly summarize, anaplasmosis or ehrlichiosis, it's a tick-borne illness. It can cause fevers, nausea, vomiting, myalgias, macropapular rash, splenomegaly. The labs would show thrombocytopenia, lymphopenia, um, and, and potentially elevated LFTs. And you would diagnose this via a um, peripheral blood smear with a Reichiam sustain, which would show mulberry appearance. Uh, inclusion bodies. Uh, if it's in the monocytes, then you're, it's ehrlichiosis. If it's in some of the granulocytes, such as neutrophils, eosinophils, or basophils, that is anaplasmosis, most common in the southern U.S. Often, Lyme disease is a co-infection as the one of the vectors is the exodes tick, and so oftentimes people will send either a Eli uh, ELISA or a Lyme serology just to assess for co-infection. Treatment is doxycycline. Enjoy the rest of your day, folks.